being a Canadian sort of rock star is sort of a humble existence in in the house of rock. You know, like you know, we're definitely on the lower floors, and uh, and so you know, it, we have to work. We have to you know make records and tour and you know keep keep funds coming in. We don't have our we can't afford the the chateau in southern France quite yet. And then in the band, there is a genuine friendship. You guys are actually true friends. There's not a Keith, like, you know, like a Richard's Jagger love-hate <laughs> thing going on. Jim and I, it's so strange when I have to actually think about this or talk. We met in high school, yeah. you know, and we've been in bands together since 1978. Yeah, we, we hang out if we're not on the road or something. Like, you know, we hang out because, you know, we just enjoy each other's company. But this time we had like a lot of songs. And we started joking a bit, you know, this should be a double CD, you know, there's a lot of good songs here. As we were sort of joking about it, Tom York from Radiohead said in that sort of pompous British pop star way, albums are dead. Radiohead will never make another, another record, they will only download songs now. And we thought, what a pompous little twit, you know, like what a ridiculous thing to say. So we said, let's do a double CD. You know, just for the hell of it. Having a double vinyl record has been one of my favorite things. Every, of all the things that we've done, having that double vinyl gatefold record has been one of the more satisfying things in our career. What do you think? I can remember getting my first gatefold record. It was Blonde on Blonde by Bob Dylan. And, and that was just, it was just a place that I could live. You know, like it, it was like a city of song, and I could hang out with Bob Dylan. We'd go to all these places in, in the city of song. And he opened up the cover, and there was Bob in his brown suede coat with his collar up and, and the scarf tied. And, and so uh, yeah, that's how I wore my coat. I got a coat just like that, got my scarf, put it on the outside, frazzled my hair up. Double records were often there were great statements in an artist's career. Was it the title track that you said you wrote on piano? Is that right? I don't piano, and I don't play piano. Right. Like, well, I don't know a C chord. <laughs> what was that like? Why did you decide to do it that way? I was just sitting at the piano, and I love goofing around on the piano, even though I don't know what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden, this pattern sort of emerged, and, and as I'm playing it, it, the song just came out. And I don't really get too many songs like that. Usually, it's a little more hard work than that. When we recorded it, I wanted the piano player to play it like I played it, which is sort of crippled, you know? And so it was very rudimentary and very, uh, it was like a sketch almost. And because it was so open, it allowed us to experiment a bit and put in the, the mellotron cello and flute and the timpanis and, and make it into something a little more grand. Which is kind of cool when you see something start sort of maybe a little bit more rough and then sort of evolve and transform into this, you know, great the title track of your record that you opened the album with. Yeah, there's definitely, there was a while there where we didn't even think it would get on because it was so crippled, you know. And then just we put a few things on it and just sort of went, oh, kaboom, this is fantastic. So now, yeah, and as you say, it ended up being the first song. And, you know, everyone goes, well, that doesn't sound like a Blue Rodeo song. You two complement each other really well, I think, as, as singers and as songwriters. Just, do you feel like maybe your fans sort of, some of your fans maybe relate more to, to the Greg Keeler sound and some fans relate more to the Jim Cuddy sound? Well, that was one of the jokes when we were doing this double record, where we were saying, we should really make our fans happy. And on this double CD, you take one side, and I'll take the other side, and then people will be really happy. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's people who, who, who like, you know, a Jim song more than they like a Greg song, but, you know, it goes back and forth. And, so, and you, the, one of the things that I, I like the way we sing together, completely influenced. Uh, like on this record, there's two records in particular that I listen to a lot, and one would be a Legion Leaf by Fairport Convention, and the other one is a Big Sister, uh, Big Star, it's sort of an Alex Chilton solo record. Like, and then even our friends are big influences, like, you know, like people that we play with and hang out with and that. And I did a record with uh, Cuff the Duke. Uh, their opening. Their opening, yeah. And they made a fantastic record. Wayne sings on 10 songs on our record. So, you know, that's nice when the, the young pups can teach us a new trick. Recently you had an ear infection as well that's kind of been uh, giving you some trouble. Yeah, it still does. 
what is that does that change things for you guys when you're I mean I know Jim's recovered and he can I mean if you listen to one more night obviously he can hit those high notes that's right how does it affect you with the ear infection in as far as performing and that sort of thing well it affected the new record a lot in that um, we didn't we could only play acoustic without any amplification and no vocal amplification so all the rehearsals were really you know this sort of volume it, it was really quiet and it was nice because we learned all the songs acoustically and uh, so the basis for the whole record was quite acoustic how do you choose when you're playing a tour you want to support your new album but you know there's people out there who want to hear lost together want to hear try want to hear you know their favorites that they can sing along to you sort of have to do those you know we don't do try every night but we do lost together every day and there's a few songs that we can't really escape. Do you want to escape them? There's been times when we have, you know, when we actually haven't played them. We've gone periods where we're not going to play that song for a while. When we started this tour, we were doing about 10 new songs. And it was fine, it was good. But you could tell that the audience was very happy to hear some of the older stuff. So, you know, we're probably down to six or seven new ones a night now. With some of the songs, people have so many sort of life experiences related to them. You know, oh, you know, we did this, we did that, or this was our song for this, or we got married to this song, or you know, we played this at my brother's funeral. You know, so they have this strong emotional sort of weight to them, and people do like to hear them. How does that make you feel to know that your songs do mark a lot of important occasions in people's lives? Well, it's pretty flattering, you know. You know, I, I always like that, you know, that some of our songs are like campfire classics, you know, a whole pile of people sitting around wasted singing our songs. That's very nice.